So welcome to section 2 of the course, training your first neural network. The purpose of this section is to get our basics right with the help of simple neural network. So as part of this section, uh, first we'll build an artificial neural network and in that process, we will learn concepts like nodes, weights, biases, activation functions and how they come together. Then we'll take a look at uh, loss functions which help us know if our model is being tuned in the right direction or not. A higher loss value would obviously mean that we are moving away from where the correct model weights should be. Then we learn about optimizers which help us tune the model weights properly and it does so with the help of gradients calculated on the loss with respect to all the weights and biases. Once our model is ready with the loss function and optimizer in place, we will proceed to train it and once trained we will try to do inferencing on unseen data. We'll also see how to save this model to disk and load it back and for those with GPUs we'll tweak the model to run all the computation all the training on the GPU. So let's get started. Building a simple neural network. We have already seen the motivation behind creating a neural network. So in this video we will create a neural network and do some useful tasks. We'll start by understanding the concept of a neuron and with that we'll understand weights, biases and activation functions and then we'll proceed to create a multi-layer feedforward neural network. A neural network also called an artificial neural network or ANN is actually a graph data structure. It has nodes and edges. The nodes with their incoming edges are called artificial neurons with reference to the brain component which, from which this is partially inspired. So to understand neural networks, it's best to start by understanding a neuron. It's actually a mathematical equation, but conveniently visualized as shown. It is characterized by a node, the circle, with multiple incoming edges and an outgoing edge. Each incoming edge has a weight associated with it. The node itself has a bias associated with it. Each incoming input gets multiplied by the edge weights and then that value gets added to the bias. In a sense, we are calculating the weighted sum of the inputs and the resultant output can take any value from negative to positive. It is then passed through what is called an activation function, which is very important. And that output becomes the output of the total neuron. So that's the composition of a neuron. When we say that we are training a neural network, all we are doing is tuning the values of these weights and biases, which we have no idea of when we start training it, so that we can achieve a desired input-output relationship. The desired input-output relationship is given by our training data set. The weights, as you can imagine, suggest what is the relative importance of each of the incoming inputs. And the bias suggests the output of the neuron independent of the inputs. For example, it is the value the neuron will emit when all the inputs are zero. Now let us take a look at activation functions. They are a very important component of neural networks. It is due to them that the network is able to learn complex boundaries in your data set. They bring in non-linearity into the network. They decide when the neuron should fire or have a value of something other than zero. Now without these functions, the model can only dissect the data set with linear lines because all the calculations together become one large linear equation without these functions. With the activation functions, the network can partition the data with complex boundaries and can do useful tasks. Here are some activation functions and their input output characteristics. The sigmoid takes its input and squashes it between 0 and 1. When the input is near to 0, the output has this nice gradient, whereas if the input tends to be negative or positive, the output saturates to 0 or 1. Tan H does the same thing, but in this case the output changes from minus 1 to plus 1. ReLU is, in that sense, very simple. If the input is 0 or less, the output would be 0. And for every other case, the output would be same as the input. Almost all of the deep learning models use ReLU, which has 
given good results for a variety of tasks. A neural network is constructed by joining together neurons that we saw earlier. The neurons are segmented into an input layer, an output layer, and one or more hidden layers. So here we have a multi-layer feedforward neural network. A user of the neural network gets to interact with the input and output layers. The input can be, for example, pixels from an image, and output can be the class of the image. Any given layer will have incoming connections and outgoing connections. Uh, for example, in this case, the hidden layer gets three incoming edges per node and has four outgoing edges. Also, the output of the neural network can be given to a classifier for classification. Okay, so with that knowledge, let us proceed to build an artificial neural network and inspect its elements. And so for that, we will jump right into this IPython notebook. So in this section, we'll be building a fully connected feedforward neural network to classify a flower based on its uh, structural attributes. We start by importing all the modules that we need. Now, in order to access the data set, which is in the form of comma separated variables, I've written a small module and created a PyTorch data set. You can take a look at iris.py if interested in knowing how that was done. The data set that we are talking about, the iris data set, which is quite popular in machine learning teaching, has four attributes of a flower called the iris. The four attributes are the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, along with class of the flower. Sepal is the part of the flower bending downwards, like this one, whereas petal is the one which is standing upright. These attributes map to one of the three kinds of these flowers found, the iris setosa, iris very versicolor, and iris virginica. The challenge is to create a model which, when given the attributes of the flower, should classify it into one of these three classes. Um, here are some examples. Let us read from the data set, uh, first few lines, and see how it looks like. So we see four columns of the structural attributes and the class of uh, that flower. With that data set and challenge in mind, let's create a fully connected three-layer neural network. The choice of the number of layers and number of nodes per layer part of the design process of building a neural network. You might have to try a few variations to see which fits best given the data set you have. All the neural networks in PyTorch are built by creating custom modules, which are classes inheriting from the nn.module base class. The advantage of this is that modules can be nested within each other like a tree structure, and so you can group different groups of layers together and keep them logically separate. The two methods that needs to be implemented are the init method and the forward method. The init method gets called when you instantiate this class. It is used to create the various layers, create activation functions, initialize stuff, and so on. So in this case, we are taking in four inputs. The input size is the number of attributes of the flower and it will be used to create our first fully connected layer. The next two parameters, hidden one size and hidden two size, suggest the number of nodes you want to have in the hidden layers. The higher the number, the better the model can fit the training data, but too high of a number can lead to overfitting, a problem where the model learns the training data so well that it does poorly on the unseen data. The num classes, parameter will be the number of classes we have in the data set, which happens to be three. There are also the number of neurons we want to have in the output layer. Hence, these three neurons on the output layer will give out three class scores, one for each class. If the model is properly trained, the class with the highest score should match the actual class for that data instance. So in the body, we are creating three linear units. Uh, these are the classes which implement fully connected layers. If they take two arguments, the number of incoming edges and number of outgoing edges. They also create one bias per number of outgoing edges. 
Also, we are creating two uh, ReLU activation functions to go with the first two hidden units. The last one, which is F3, will be our output layer, which will give out the three class scores. The forward method is where you combine all these together. The forward function is called with inputs to this module. In our case, the attributes of the flower, and it returns the result of the calculations, which are the class scores. In this case, first we are passing the input through a fully connected layer followed by our ReLU activation function. This constitutes our first hidden layer. We do the same with our second hidden layer. And finally, the output is passed through the output layer, giving us the class scores. Hence, in goes the attributes of the flower and out comes the class scores. Also note that we always process data in batches. What we will be passing in are a number of instances as a batch and the output will be a set of class scores for the entire batch. The number of data instances in the batch is governed by the batch size which is set while iterating through our data set. So let's create this class. You can actually print all the layers from an object of this class like so. So in this case we are instantiating irisnet with 4 as the input size, 3 as the num classes and we have chosen 100 to be the number of nodes we want in the first hidden layer and 50 to be the number of nodes we want in the second hidden layer. The description printed here suggests everything that we discussed. Next we'll be creating the data loader. We select batch size of 60 suggesting that in each iteration the data loader will give us 60 instances. So if the total number of instances in the training set is 120, we'll have uh, two iterations to cover the entire set, which is actually one epoch. This is the file which contains the comma separated values that we'll be ingesting in. So the first thing we do is create the datasets by calling the iris.get datasets function. Remember this is the module that I implemented, you can take a look. So let's run this. So what we see here is that we have 120 instances in the training set and 30 instances in the testing or validation set. I'll be using these two terms interchangeably. Next we create data loader which whose responsibility is to allow us to iterate through this data set. And there are a few things we can do with the data loader. First we set the data set and then we select the batch size and then we set shuffle is equal to true. The shuffle is equal to true flag indicates or instructs data loader to have the data reshuffled at every epoch so that we get different batch compositions every epoch. Okay, so that was about creating our first neural network and creating the data loader.